take a look at the six proven ways to improve your health. The first is vitamin C. Now, those of you that have been following my website and my books and have watched Food Matters know that I once in a while recommend that people take more vitamin C than the RDA. Oh my, what a thought that is, huh? The fact of the matter is the use of tens of thousands of milligrams of vitamin C per day has been well established. And we're talking 50 or 60 years of clinical evidence from medical doctors who are medically trained who walked away from medicines in favor of using vitamin C therapy. Now, I don't think we should ignore research or ignore the news media, but the fact is, if you really want to know something, my father used to say to me, go to the organ grinder, not the monkey. Let's go to the doctors that actually used huge doses of vitamin C, and we will find that the use of tens of thousands of milligrams of vitamin C per day may be the most unacknowledged successful clinical research in medicine. Now, the history of vitamin C therapy goes back to 1935 when a full professor of biochemistry at Columbia University, Klaus Jungblatt, first published on vitamin C for the prevention and treatment of polio. Now, this is especially interesting because in 1935, the United States has had a president in office, Franklin Delano Roosevelt who had polio. He had been uh, afflicted earlier and he was uh, paralyzed. He had to walk with assistance and with a brace and canes. So this is particularly important to realize that way back in 1935, a full professor of biochemistry at one of the great universities had already shown that vitamin C could help prevent and treat polio. The same year, Youngblood showed that vitamin C inactivated diphtheria toxin. Please be sure to understand that this is long before uh, vaccinations were available for polio and for other diseases, so it was all the more important that this information got out. In 1937, Youngblood demonstrated that vitamin C inactivated tetanus toxin, and then while the Second World War was still going on, Frederick Robert Klenner, a United States medical doctor in North Carolina, Duke University Medical School graduate, and a board-certified chess specialist, actually demonstrated that Jungblut was right, and Klenner used higher doses of vitamin C, much higher than Jungblut, and on top of that, because he was a chess specialist, I guess it figures that he figured if it's good against one virus, it might be good against another. Klenner then reported 41 cured cases of viral pneumonia with vitamin C. And as it says in the slide, by 1949, he was announcing that he had reversed or at least arrested polio in a number of cases. He reported this information at a meeting of the American Medical Association. My understanding is he did not get any questions. Now, as soon as we link things like kidney stones, polio, diphtheria, tetanus, uh, cardiovascular disease, all together with one vitamin, it starts to sound a little strange. And this is where people have some difficulty. Vitamin C is good for too many things. That's a public relations problem. It's not a scientific problem. Almost any doctor will tell you that there's a lot of uses for antibiotics. Almost any doctor will tell you that there's quite a few uses for prednisone. It's also true that there's quite a few uses for vitamin C if you give high enough doses. Now it gets even better because in the 1960s, American physician Robert Fulton Cathcart III, again a medical doctor, out in uh, California, USA, was treating influenza, pneumonia, hepatitis, and eventually in the 1980s and 90s, he would be treating AIDS. What could be a more powerful demonstration of an antiviral than that? In the 1970s, Ewan Cameron, a medical doctor in Scotland, and Hugh Reardon, an American medical doctor in Kansas, 
had successfully used huge doses of vitamin C against cancer. And this is an intravenous application and also oral application of vitamin C. We've just said a mouthful, and we're going to talk more about vitamin C later on because I know you have a lot of questions. But here's the key point. Real doctors, doctors of medicine, highly qualified physicians have been using vitamin C to cure disease since 1935. If your doctor is not yet using vitamin C, you've got to ask yourself, why is that? 